Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be building a chair. This chair that we're building is called a stargazer chair or a camp chair or a Viking chair. Either way, it is all the it's all different names for the same type of chair and it is going to be cut out of one piece of wood. I'm using a 2x12. Uh, the actual 2x12 is actually 11 and a quarter inches uh, by 8 foot. I'm buying two of those to be, build two chairs. Each board, each eight foot board is gonna create a single chair. It's not gonna be put together with any nails or screws. It's gonna be basically creating a slot in one of the two by 12s and then creating uh, the other two by 12 is gonna be uh, cut to size so it slides into that slot. And I will show you the end results and this is what it's ended up looking like. Now I'm gonna show you, now that you've seen what it looks like, I'm gonna show you how we're going to build it. First thing we need to do is cut our 2x12. We're going to cut it to 36 inches and the second one to 48 inches. From the base we're going to go up 11 inches and this is going to be the bottom of our seat where that hole is going to end up being. From 11, we're gonna go one and a half inches. That's gonna be 12 and a half. And that's where we're gonna mark it. And when we, when we actually do the cutting of this hole, we are gonna do it on the outside of our line, just to make sure we have just a little bit of extra room. So when we do cut the other board for the seat to slide in here, it is gonna have enough room to slide. We don't want it too tight of a fit. If we end up being too tight, we're not gonna be able to get it in. From each side, we're gonna go in two inches. I find when doing this, using round numbers makes everything just a lot easier. All right, now that we've got that done, I'm gonna mark all of our spots out. I found there's a couple different ways to get the hole cut out. I found the easiest way is to actually drill a hole in each one of the corners and then use a jigsaw to cut out the hole. So that's what we're gonna do. And I ended up using a 5 16 drill bit for it, which allows for my jigsaw to fit in perfectly. Now the seat we want it to be roughly 12 inches for a comfortable seat. We'll mark that out. And then we want to create same situation here. So we're going to go in two inches. We do that on both sides. For this, we're gonna be cutting out the shaded section. Now for this stretch of stuff, we are gonna use the circular saw to cut most of the way down. Once we get close to the edge, we use the uh, jigsaw to finish it off. Now we're losing light fast, but I want to put some edges on this. So I'm going to do a three inch ledge or edge on it. Marking each one of these corners at three inches.
All right, now this is going outside, so it may not be necessary to sand it, but if you were leaving it unstained like this. But because I am going to be staining it, and I am going to be putting a uh, spyurethane on it, I want it to be able to take, I want a very smooth surface for it all gone. So I'm gonna give it a rough sanding, and then I'm gonna work my way up from an 80, just to round out all the edges, and then move up to a 120 and finish off with a 220. So we're gonna do this first, and then swipe it down, and move on to the next one. Wipe them down, do a little sawdust off, and now we're going to put some stain on it. This is what we're using, this wood stain by Verithane. This is an aged barrel. So what we're going to do is put this on, let it sit for three to five minutes so it darkens up. It only needs one coat, so then we'll wipe it off, and then let it sit dry for about an hour, and that'll be it. Now we're going to waterproof it. We're going to be using a spyurethane. It's an exterior oil-based spyurethane by Varethane. Now for using this product, it's pretty simple. We're going to be applying, applying it using a brush and we're going to be waiting approximately four hours between each coating session. Now we're going to be covering the front and the back, making sure we allow for enough dry time. It is going to get a little tacky, but we want to keep applying it. If you go over the 12-hour marker, you're going to have to sand it prior to recoating it. Now they have a minimum recommendation of three coats and a 12 hour dry period before light use in three days until you can use it like normal. Now the idea is for this to be completely transportable. So what we want to do is we're going to add a handle to one side and we're going to add a method of attaching things. Now to make this chair more transportable, we want to make sure that the seat is affixed to the back. So we're going to be using barricade brackets to hold everything in place. Now the bottom portion of the seat is two inches narrower than the actual backrest itself. So we are gonna go about an inch and three quarters. So allow about a half inch of total space for this to slide in and out with ease. Now it's in place, instead of using a pencil and gouging it, I'm gonna use a dry erase marker and mark the center of the holes where I wanna put these. We're gonna pre-drill our holes. I'm using a 3 32nd drill bit just as a pilot hole for the screws to go in. Now we're using three brackets, two to hold it into place, and the last one at the bottom to ensure there's no unneeded stress on the wood of the brackets while carrying it. Now we're sliding this down just a little bit further down because we want to move the center of gravity because this is going to be weighted heavier. We want to move the center of gravity closer to the center. So when we do actually hang our handles on, they won't be centered, they might be just shifted over slightly to account for this weight and to balance everything out. I think we're going to go approximately 20 inches from the top to right about here. And that's where our next brackets are going to go, is 20 inches from the top. Now again, because it doesn't sit so well in the back, you can't really get anything in, we're going to pre-drill those holes all the way down and up. It's just going to make using the rents a little bit easier. Now before you get everything done, let's try fit it.
we got it centered. We got to figure out where this is going to go. So we want to be able to find where center is, where you're going to be able to pick it up, and it's going to be balanced. So right there is balance. And then we're going to measure where that is. And that's going to be 24 inches. Alright guys, so everything turned out great. I'll leave the exact materials I used in the description below. I'll also leave some links to the things I picked up on Amazon, the barricade brackets and the kayak handles. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below, especially if you think there's anything I should have done different. These are my first uh, set that I made. I will be making more. So if anybody has any suggestions or things I should try or something just to make them a little bit better, please let me know. Now, as always, everyone, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.